what's up YouTube, Wawa 5699 here and welcome to another video. I've been actually debating on making this video because I don't know how the feedback is going to be because I, I really don't know how the feedback is going to be but I'm going to give it a shot and talk about this topic. Um, the only reason I'm bringing this up because today, as you can tell we talk, by the title of I'm talking about Doki Doki Literature Club. And I want to bring it up today because today marks the third anniversary of Doki Doki Literature Club. And I wanted to talk about my Doki Doki Literature Club story, how I found the game, how it impacted me, and pretty much, I don't know, save me was the right word, but I want to talk about how much this game really changed and put an impact on me. In a good way, of course. But anyway, I wanted to talk about it because today marks the third anniversary of Doki Doki Literature Club, and today is also Mon the character's Monica's birthday. So. I wanted to talk about my Doki Doki Lurch Club story and how it impacted me and saved me. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but anyway, I found Doki Doki Lurch Club June of this year, of 2020, and I've heard little about the game beforehand. I've came across it once or twice, I think either back in 2018, I was in college or something, I was in college classes one day and I saw a YouTuber doing a cover of the song Your Reality, and I thought, okay, this is just from, this is from a simple dating sim game and I didn't know at the time it was a horror game and uh, I'm not a huge fan of horror games really I'm not a huge fan of like Five Nights at Freddy's or what else um, I don't know not Slender I'm not a huge fan of those big scary horror games I don't play many of those games rarely on my channel I think the only horror game I played on my channel was One Night at the Flumpies but um but yeah it was just like I, I honestly thought, like most people, I thought it was just a dating, a typical dating sim, and uh, I came across it again this year, back in June. Uh, it was a reckon somebody suggested it, recommended it on my Steam page, on my Steam page, and I looked at it. I was like, okay, what is this? And then I saw that it had a 10 out of 10 rating on Steam, and it had a lot of positive, positive feedback. And people are like, do not see spoilers for this game. Play the game first before you watch any videos on it. That's what many, many of the reviews and many people are saying. I said, okay, it's a new game for my channel I can play while I'm waiting for Emily's Away 3 and Honey Pop 2 because those games have not been out yet. They've been delayed like so many times, but this game was free on Steam. It's got a bunch of positive feedback. I said, okay, I'll give it a go. I'll play a couple of, vid a couple of videos on it. As soon as I, da I downloaded it, I played the first half of the first act. I didn't get too much in the horror. And I came across a couple of other mods like Doki Doki Exit Music, uh, Blue Skies, Monica After Story. Those are the three mods I played so far on my channel. And I said, okay, this game, I want to see when the horror comes in. So, of course, I look up YouTubers playing it like Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye. Those are the three go to videos. Three YouTubers I want to see play those games I have in mind. And so I watched Jacksepticeye play it. And I saw pretty much the whole series for, for his videos. And I was like, wow, this game turned really quick. After, afterwards, Siori, poor, poor Siori hanged herself because she struggled with depression. I didn't know about that until after I got to the part where she was, uh, t she told the character she had depression. And I can tell by the video that when she, that was when I, my first reaction was what you saw on the, what, on the video, part three of Doki Doki Ninja Club, about her explaining that she had depression. And it hit, that hit close close to home to me because as someone who deals with depression, anxiety, and, an, and autism on top of it, it's like, wow, this, this game can, I can relate to this character, to the game. And uh, and then I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I decided to stop playing the game because I didn't want to see the part where Siori hanged herself or how crazy the game was going to be. I wanted to play other mods. I play more play mods on the get ch on the Doki Doki, so I went to go look at the videos like the Jacksepticeye playing it, and that's where I pretty much saw the, saw the rest of the game. It was like I liked how it started out as a simple dating sim. I liked the idea of that. That's cool. And then it turns into a horror game. It turns to go it goes a far, it goes off deep end really quick. And then it gets to Act Three, where it's just you and Monica, and uh, she basically is aware that she's in a game. And she's in love with not the character of the game, but you, fourth wall. And I thought that was really interesting. 
And I never got to that far part in the game because I because I didn't want to get that far because I was scared. Not because of the jump scares, no, because I didn't. Because uh, these characters already made such an impact on me. And so when you realize when I had the late Monica, and I, I know I've seen many comments and videos that people don't like Monica because of what she did. But I, I if you ask me, I literally do not hate any of the Doki Doki Legend Club characters. I literally love basically all of them, all of them in their own different ways. I know. It sounds weird. I know. It pro I know that's weird, but and then once she gets deleted, and then brings us uh, Yuri, Natsuki, and Yuri back, and then like most YouTubers, they have the bad ending where the end credits come and Monica deletes the picture, so she leaves as a goodbye later, and the game goes. I then I was looking up on on the wiki page of Wikipedia, the Doki Doki the Wikipedia page, and it talks about the endings, the good ending. I'll, I'll admit that I actually bawled my eyes out when I saw that ending. I don't know why. I still don't know to this day if it was happy tears or sad tears. I literally can't can't give you an answer for that. But when I saw that ending, and I literally there was something about that that made me cry. I and I've never. Uh, I'm a crybaby. Yeah, I'm a crybaby. But I've never cried over games. I, I mean, I got angry at games. I've been pissed off at games, but I never had maybe I never had a game that made me burst into tears. And I don't know what caused it because when Siori is like, we reached the end, thank you for playing Doki Doki Literature Club, visit us and we love you. And then hearing your reality and seeing, without the picture being deleted, and then seeing Don, Dan Savato's letter basically explaining that, how he made the game and he was grateful for for us to get the ending. And I saw it and I read I didn't, I, I mean I couldn't read it at first, but when, once I read it, I was like, wow, you could see how much... I don't know how to explain it from the right words, but you can see how much Dan Zavato cares about this game. He goes to conventions and takes pictures with fans that are in cosplays to meet fans. And, you know, I literally, he did an AM, AMA on Red and I saw, and there was just, uh, I don't know what's in this game. I literally, I'm still trying to find an answer. Like, what is in this game that caused me to had an impact on me? What is in this game that changed me? What is this in the, what is in this game that basically saved me because... For the, since August of 2019, I've been struggling really bad with anxiety and depression, and I had trouble sleeping most nights. I thought, for a long period of time, I thought I was having a stroke, I thought I was having a heart attack, and I caught a couple of this a couple of times. It got to the point where my anxiety got so bad, I got chest chest pains, and my arm was hurting. I literally thought I was having a heart attack, and nothing came up, and then... Uh, for the long period of time, I, I had I switched rooms, and even though I never talked about it, I switched rooms with my brother. I used to have the room at the back of the house, and I'm in the front of the house. And uh, I didn't sleep in that room for a while. I would either sleep on the couch, or sleep in my brother's room, or sleep on in my parents' room. It was just like I didn't want to sleep in that room. I don't know. I would spend all day in there playing on my computer, or all that, watching TV, and all that. But I couldn't, I couldn't sleep in there. I don't know. I've tried many times, and there was times where I didn't go to bed till one or two o'clock in the morning. At one time, it got so bad that I had to woke up my parents because I was freaking out. And then, my thankfully, my dad took me to took me to IHOP at three in the morning to talk about it. And then, from January, ever since I, the main reason why I've had bad, bad anxiety problems and all that is because I wasn't taking my medicine. Because one of the medicines I take it makes your chest bigger, it makes your breast really, really bigger. And my mom said that it's fine, it's not doing that to me, but I worried about that because I didn't take it for like four months, that's why. And then ever since I started taking it, uh, my mind's been clearer, I haven't had any bad anxiety and bad anxiety problems lately. I have some off and on once or twice a week, and then when I found, and then from February, and from maybe January to up until June, I was basically depressed every day, every day. And just to be clear, I, d I don't harm myself, I don't have suicidal thoughts, I don't have any thoughts like that, so you don't have to worry about me killing myself or anything like that. I just have depression where I just want to lay in bed all day and do nothing. And I saw a therapist back in March, and uh, she basically said that when I told her that I had anxiety and depression, and basically that bitch said that I didn't, she, did, she didn't think that I had anxiety or depression, it's just all in my head. And so basically I walked out of the therapy room and she scheduled me back for another point, but I didn't go because I want to. I want to. Basically, therapy. When I was in high school, that therapy as a kid helped me, but as an adult, not so much, because I know there's other sources I can go to. I can make videos as therapy. I can play games as therapy. I can talk to friends. I can talk to family. I can be more open. 
I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to somebody that I only see once a month, once every every two weeks, and then I'm paying money out of the pocket when I can do do videos for free. I can talk to my friends for free. I can talk to my family for free. I can talk to any any of those. Well, and you're like, well, my parents are like, well, maybe they had the right answer that most people don't. And just like, I don't want to do that. And I've I've I was supposed to have a therapy session with another guy back at the end of March, but since the uh, quarantine outbreak happened. It was I just had it. Just I never got a call back or anything. So I haven't been in therapy since like February, February or March, and then like pretty much. I wouldn't say it was Saturday day. There was just something, something that would really bring me down. Well, there was something, something, something. Somebody said something I saw. There was just something that would just bring me upset. And back in early late 2018, 2019, I was going through this phase like everything would make me mad. A movie would make me mad. Hearing a song would make me make mad. Talking would make me irritated. Seeing other people be so, everything would make me so mad that I just wanted I wanted to be in my room and don't listen to nothing. Have nothing. Have complete silence. And there was like I swear there were certain songs that like put me in a bad mood. It would make me sad. It would make me more depressed in a bad mood. I don't know why. They're stupid songs. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then he, watching a movie would make me irritated because I'm 21. Maybe it's because I'm 21 and I'm still living at home. I'm still living in the same shithole town I've been in for the past nine years. And i nowhere close to getting my dreams, to making my dreams a reality. Yeah, you know, I have over 4,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I know that's a lot. A lot. You know, I want, hopefully one day... I can get 10,000 subscribers. I hopefully one day I can get 100,000. That's my dream. My dream is to get 100,000 subscribers. I want to have that YouTube play button. That's mine. I'm getting. I know I'm getting off topic about talking about Doki Doki Lyric Club, but this comes up into why how it helped. So when I found Doki Doki Lyric Club, I was I was I was in a good mood that day. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll check it out and see what see what I think about it. And then ever since I played a couple, played the game a couple of times, I played the mods. I played a couple of mods like Doki. The first mod I played was Doki Doki Exit Music. I played uh, uh, Monica After Story off camera so many times, and I felt so bad because I didn't want to delete that mod and then find another mod. And then I found a recent mod called Doki Doki Blue Skies, and that's the most uh, let's play of Doki Doki, uh, most played Doki Doki series I had because. What's cool about that game that you can go three different routes. The route I chose was Siori, and I'm, 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 I'm and I have to admit that I factory reset my laptop and everything got deleted. And once I tried to reinstall Doki Doki Loose guys, all the files were gone. So I'm like, you know what? Just forget the series. I'm not gonna go back, go all the way to finding go all the way to the ending. I already know how the endings for each character works. I know the good and bad endings. I know I was I would say I was leaning towards more of the good ending than I was with the bad ending because. Basically, in those endings, in the Doki Doki Blue Skies, well, I know with the two Shiori endings, a bad ending, you two, you and your main character break up, and Siori ends up killing herself, and then the character doesn't go back to Lyric Club, selling Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica that the Joint of Little Club was the biggest mistake in their life, and they all walk out. In the good ending, Siori and the main character get, uh, make, we can't still become a couple, and they end up taking their virginities to each other, which is a happy ending. Siori feels happy at once. I know with the Natsuki bad ending, I would I think the, her father murdered her, and I know with the I don't know I the good ending I think the characters and them stay together, and I think with Yuri's bad ending she ends up killing herself when she was home alone, and I know with the good ending Yuri goes to therapy and stays together with the main character, and I was just like wow that's pretty cool, how unlike Exit Music you only get to have one relationship with one character and that's Natsuki, and I didn't finish that game because. I knew the game already. I saw videos of the game how it ended before it was before I played the game because in not exit music, Natsuki ends up killing herself. The main character goes through a very bad depression and he ends up killing himself as well to be with Natsuki. And I never been in that never been in that part where I was in a relationship with somebody or had a boy, girlfriend because like me, I, I never had a girl. I never I don't know what love outside of, outside of a family was like. But I never had, I never, I don't know anybody where they had to, uh, where their loved one or girlfriend and boyfriend took their own lives. And I just, I, I've had, I've imagined it a couple times, but I just can't imagine what it's like for somebody to go through whether your boyfriend or girlfriend ends up killing themselves. And, but yeah, anyway, and then with Monica after story, I, one of the things I love about that mod is you bring Monica back. 
and it's just not the main character from Doki, not you, not your character from Doki Doki Literature of Limited, it's you talking to her, talking about playing games with her, talking about different topics to her, and even new things come along the way, even though I wish I still have the mob because today's Monica's birthday as well, and I wanted to wish her happy birthday, so if as soon as I download it, I would have to go through a bunch of stuff again. So maybe I'll bring, maybe I'll go back and play that, and I feel bad because every, uh, uh, there was just something that was a, it's a really cool mod, and it keeps getting updated every couple of months, and that's really cool. And then also, I bought, I've been buying a lot of since July. I've been buying a lot of, a lot of Doki Doki Legend Puzzles. Like I got this hat from Spencer's. I saw it online on eBay and Amazon for like 40 bucks, and I said, okay, well I'll go to Spencer's because I know Spencer's has some Doki Doki Legend Club, so maybe I got a couple of shirts and hats. And I saw this hat when I was checking out. I said I'll take it off the shelf. And I said I'll take this hat as well. And I saw also got it. So I spent about twenty something bucks on it. And I got this shirt I have off of eBay for a couple for like twenty bucks. And then I got a Mon just Monica shirt. I got a Natsuki Play With Me shirt. And I got a Monica Deletion shirt. And then I also got a couple other things too. Like I made the unboxing videos the other day or a couple the last few times. I got a Doki Doki Literature Club notebook. As you can tell, I been writing in it. I'm not writing poems or anything. I'm just writing my thoughts on Doki Doki Literature Club. And um, I also got the pillow plush I've been sleeping with, as you can tell. And then I also got this cute, adorable sheer plush. And I plan on getting more stuff from Doki Doki Literature Club. But there was just, there's, uh, I don't know how or why it made such an impact on me. I don't know. It's, in a, good, it's a good thing, though. I'm glad I came across this game. I wish I came across it sooner. But I'm very, very glad that I did find this game. It's an awesome game made by an awesome person who literally put his heart and soul into Doki Doki Allergic Club. He made something different out of it rather than doing a simple dating sim. So, but, and I saw on Reddit a while back that this game actually saved somebody's life. Apparently I read it that this guy was from the UK. He was going through a very bad part of his life he was almost get, almost ended up killing himself and then he moved to the states and then his friend suggested this game and ever since and then Dan, Dan Savato commented on it thanking him and uh, I, I don't know I don't know what I, I was expecting I was gonna cry in this video but I'm really glad I'm not because when I saw the your reality heard your, rea your reality and the um, and the goodbye letter from Monica and then seeing Dan Savato's there I didn't cry when I saw Monica's goodbye letter, but when I saw Dan Savato's letter, it's Dan Savato's letter. That's that's when I lost it because I know Dan Savato put his heart and soul into Doki Doki Literature Club, and that's what made it such a good game. So that is pretty much how why Doki Doki Literature Club impacted me because I was going through so much depression and so much anxiety. I wish I found Doki Doki Literature Club at the time late last year when I was going through bad anxiety, bad depression, when I had trouble sleeping. I wish I came across it sooner, way sooner, but I'm really glad I came, I did come across it, and I'm very glad that I did find the game. So, I highly doubt this will get to Dan Sabato. I may tweet it to him, message him, but if Dan Sabato did see this, I just want to say, Dan, if you're watching this, thank you for making such an amazing game that not only impacted me, but impacted many others as well. I know most like most people like Jacksepticeye and Markiplier and PewDiePie, they just see it as a simple, ordinary horror game. But to me, the, I know some other people that there is such a, it is a different kind of game. Because people are like, this game will change you once you play it. And it, it did it in a good way, of course. And I'm very glad I did come across it. And I'm very glad I'm part of the fandom. I don't know if the fandom as strong as it is it was now when it first came out, but I'm very glad that I that I did come across it. So I'm gonna play some more Doki Doki mods. I hope Dan Savano makes a Doki, another Doki Doki Legend Club game because I loved it. I loved I love Doki Doki Legend Club as you can tell. So, what are you guys thoughts on Doki Doki Legend Club? Am I being overly dramatic with this? Am I? I think I found it as a therapy tool. As honestly. And that's a good thing as well. So, what do you guys thoughts on Little Creature Club? Do you think it's an overrated game? Do you think it's an awesome game? Do you think it's a very cool game, unique game? I loved it, obviously, from the videos I've been making. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you, Dan Zavato, again, for making such an amazing game. This game really pretty much changed my life, saved me from 
from getting worse with my depression. So thank you for making such a cool, very amazing community. Thank you guys a lot for watching. Sorry this video went on really, really long than it should be. I just had a lot to talk about. I really wanted to make this video. But anyway, if you did, make sure you're able to thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, check out my social media down below. And as always, thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in a future video. Take it easy.